Imagine trying to seem relatable while literally marrying a billionaire. Jeff Bezos and his soon-to-be wife, Lauren Sanchez, are desperately trying to convince us that they're living a totally normal life, and let's just say the results are kind of cringeworthy. Kind of very cringeworthy. Hi. I'm a random person on the internet. You're a random person on the internet. And together, we're here to talk about Lauren Sanchez. Lately, rich people have been having a bit of an image problem. From Ed Sheeran LARPing as a Starbucks barista to promote his latest album, to Charlie D'Amelio pretending to be a Walmart cashier to launch her new popcorn company, people are understandably getting more and more fed up at the trend of rich people putting on lower paying jobs like some sort of costume in order to become even more rich. It's hard to ignore that wealth gap when you know Charlie can just take off the blue vest and then go back to making more money than a Walmart employee's yearly income in a single day, every day? Then you throw in a dash of delusion and you'll find that many of these people legitimately believe that it's all due to their hard work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Sorry, Kim, but no matter how hard the average person works, they'll never get as far as you did just by being, well, Kim Kardashian, aka being born as the daughter of one of the most high-profile lawyers of all time. But let me tell you this, tone-deaf balladeers and Walmart wackiness absolutely pale in comparison to the amount of sheer delusion we're going to be facing today. Behold, Lauren Sanchez, who is known for being the fiancé of Jeff Bezos, who is of course known for being one of the richest men in the history of the world. But according to Lauren, they're actually just like us. So as you can see, there's a lot to go over today, but before we get into all of that, let's take a quick look at today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. VPN. Imagine this, you're chatting with a friend online and one of you sends a link only to find out that the other can't open it because you've just been region locked. Some of us don't have to imagine because that's pretty much the international friend starter pack, but thankfully that's where Surfshark VPN comes in. With Surfshark, I can simply change my virtual location using one of over 3,000 servers across the world and unblock content from anywhere. Here's another one. Imagine you think you're just watching a YouTube video, but at this very moment, all of your online activity is being tracked. Unfortunately, none of us have to imagine that one because that is literally happening right now. But once again, Surfshark saves the day. As a VPN, Surfshark encrypts your data, masks your IP address, and blocks trackers and phishing attempts, all without monitoring or saving your online activity. These are just a couple of ways that Surfshark brings both freedom and security to your web browsing experience, and you can try it for free today. Follow the link in the description to get an exclusive Surfshark Black Friday deal. Enter code D'Angelo and get up to six additional months of Surfshark for free on all of your devices with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Now let's get into the video. So the main thing we'll be looking at today is this profile that was published in Vogue called Lauren Sanchez is looking to the future. And it's really more so a profile of both Lauren and Jeff, which are we seriously at the point in time where being a billionaire is enough to get you in Vogue magazine? Like as you're going to see in this article, my man has zero fashion sense, and yet he is in pretty much one of the most premier fashion magazines. It's a little early, ladies, says Jeff Bezos, and he erupts with his signature machine gun laugh. You know, I don't think I've ever actually heard Jeff Bezos laugh, but I also don't think I want to. So the entire first part, like the first couple of paragraphs, is basically just an enormous flex. The writer goes into detail about Jeff's 400,000 acre ranch. Just for conceptualization, 400 square miles is larger than the entire city of New York, so there's that. They also talk about, again, his giant underground clock. So as you can see in this image, Jeff Bezos, I guess, is building a 10,000 year clock, which he has apparently spent at least $42 million on. And the point of this 10,000 year clock is to tick for 10,000 years. It represents thinking about the future, as uh, Sanchez says. Let's be real, I don't think we're still going to be here in 10,000 years, but we shall see. It also talks about her $2.5 million engagement ring, as well as her $500 million super yacht. And here's the thing, all these prices that I'm pulling for you, I've had to independently go and find the prices of these things. Like right off the bat, this article is trying to downplay the fact that these people are just loaded beyond human comprehension. But yeah, after you get past all of the flexing in which we're learning more about these people's possessions than the people themselves, it talks a little bit about Lauren Sanchez's increasingly active media tour. She's out here posting like Instagram thirst traps of Jeff Bezos, which is 
pretty much the worst sentence I've ever said. Images like Bezos emerging from the water like a Mediterranean he-man in palm print swim trunks. His fiance captioning the photo, is it just me or is it hot outside? I really like how the first comment that I see without scrolling says, nah, it's just you. Mediterranean he-man is definitely a little bit generous, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, other pics that she's been posting include the couple flanked by security and a group of guests aboard their yacht, including Usher and Katy Perry, strolling the old city streets of Dubrovnik, the at sea engagement party where Leonardo DiCaprio, Bill Gates, and Queen Rania of Jordan all feted Bezos and Sanchez, the latter presiding in a glittering silver miniskirt and crop top. Personally, and hear me out, I think they both should have worn glittering silver miniskirts and crop tops. It's not even particularly that I want to see Jeff Bezos of all people in a miniskirt, I just... I wish men's fashion was not boring. Anyway, we get the point, right? She's posting all these pictures. Some of them are conveniently being snapped by paparazzi. And even this Vogue article itself counts as promotion for her and Bezos and this lifestyle that she's really trying to put forward here. And here we get to the next picture in the photo shoot, which um, I do have some thoughts about. You're going to see throughout this article that there's actually like a Texas slash cowboy theme throughout the entire thing, like the photo shoot and a lot of the stuff in the article. And I don't know if it's just the fact that I did spend like 20 two years living in texas but i am not buying this photo shoot at all it's giving less resident of texas and more like background actor in a campy wild west movie from the 60s sanchez on bezos's west texas ranch polo ralph lauren jacket and ralph lauren collection jeans skims top thomas Cree's cuffs like i i just i feel like wearing ralph lauren and kim k's body shaping brand kind of goes against the whole how to dress like a texas person vibe but what do i know i certainly don't dress like i'm from texas so disregard like to be clear she is not from texas she's from new mexico which is close but she spends the majority of her time according to this article in seattle and california so yeehaw she was cleanly made up practically photo shoot ready all over again in stodden wrangler jeans and alexander mcqueen sneakers pristine white despite the dust we're flying otherwise i'd be in cowboy boots she said before adding conspiratorially though i have flown in heels before i feel like she literally just needs to add like a yeehaw after every other sentence so anyway if you're asking yourself like what does she do? Surely it's something, right? Yeah, she is actually very accomplished. She is a pilot. Over a decade ago, Sanchez earned her fixed wing pilot's license and then trained to become certified as a helicopter pilot. Following a successful run as a TV newscaster, she formed an aerial production company that has consulted on films such as Dunkirk and now shoots all of Blue Origin's launches. And for those of you who don't know, Blue Origin is Jeff Bezos' space company, right? They do rocket launches. They claim that they're doing it for the good of humanity but really it's just like a billionaire pet project etc nothing we haven't seen before we get another um amazing photo this time including the man himself jeff bezos definitely wearing an outfit which i'm sure is similar to many other outfits he's worn and definitely not just for this photo shoot and you know jeff bezos actually did spend some time in texas as a kid but the hat if i had a nickel for every time i saw a billionaire cosplaying as a cowboy i would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but if I see it 19,999,999,998 more times, then maybe I can become a billionaire too. Anyway, speaking of billionaires, so after we introduce the Texas vibes and the ranch and the yeehaw, next we start doing some image rehab for Jeff Jefferson Bezos. I don't know his middle name actually. Yo, his middle name is Preston? I mean, Preston's a fine name. It's just like, that is not what I thought it would be. I don't know why. I was thinking like, I don't know, John. <laughs> Jeffrey John Bezos. But yes, yeah, so of all people to try to do a Puff PR piece for, it starts doing it for Jeff Bezos. And it's like, come on, dude. Like, listen how they try to recontextualize my man here. Much has been made of Bezos's evolution from round-shouldered online bookseller to Tony Stark titan of industry and the third richest man in the world. Once insular and press shy, he formed a tight cocoon around Amazon, his then wife, McKinsey, and their four children in Seattle. Now it's as if he's emerged from his chrysalis, a swole monarch, no longer Amazon CEO, a role he seeded in 2021, but an empty nester who is venturing not only into the Adriatic, but into outer space. I'm sorry, but some of this 
literally reads like fan fiction. <laughs> like, oh, he was a swole monarch. He rose from the water like a Mediterranean He-Man. Wait, actually, is there Jeff Bezos fan fiction? Man, I haven't been on archive of our own in so long. Jeff Bezos x Minecraft Steve. Forbidden love. And with that, I now realize I asked a question that I really didn't want the answer to. Anyway, besides just trying to push the fact that, you know, he's so jacked on us, there's some really strange wording going on here. Like, notice how they say he's no longer Amazon CEO, a role he seated in 2021, and they're really trying to, like, disconnect him from that. But, like, my man is still the executive chair of Amazon. Like, he is literally still involved with the company. He's still a billionaire no longer amazon ceo now he's an empty nester and an adventurer like nah he he's just the worst still actually nothing has changed i promise you also speaking of more strange wording designed to make him seem better than he is notice how they mention his quote-unquote then wife mckenzie notice how she's kind of not in the picture now and his current fiance is lauren yeah he cheated on mckenzie scott with this lady actually um they definitely did leave that part out here but it's a vibe, I guess. All his kids were still kids when he did this as well. And he was just like, nah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm switch it up. Like, I cannot emphasize enough besides the fact that he's a billionaire and there is no ethical way of doing that. So by default, this is like an incredibly evil person. Jeff Bezos sucks, dude. But yeah, um, I believe this is actually the only time Mackenzie Scott's name comes up in this entire article, which is unique. No mention of the divorce, which was literally the most expensive divorce in history with a settlement of $38 billion. Nah, he's an adventurer now. All right. So anyways, after we do some PR for Jeff, of course, we have to introduce Lauren. Sanchez, by all accounts, is the perfect partner for all of it. Unbridled in her enthusiasm. Seven people I spoke to described her as a force, but also socially adept, attentive, a diplomat of a kind. Lauren has amazing intuition, almost witchy powers in that regard, says Bezos. She sees things that other people don't see. She's really very sensitive to other people and what they're thinking. So you may be thinking like, okay, well, you know, Lauren sounds nice. Uh, they also left out the part where she was cheating on her husband as well. I kid you not. They were both married to other people when they got together, which is vibes. Also, seven people describing you the same way is giving me sending a message to the group chat like hey they're gonna interview you guys can you all say that i am like incredibly handsome i mean that's not the best example because honestly anyone who's ever seen me is aware of this but still and so i think in order to smooth over the cheating which they didn't even mention uh they really try to lean into guys they just they love each other so much they're so perfect for each other like sure they both literally blew up their own families but like Guys, it was just, um, it was meant to be, honestly. She's a sparkler in Jeff's life, says Barry Diller, who with his wife, Diane von Furstenberg, are two of Bezos' closest friends. They are very in love with each other. They're demonstrably in love, he adds. She's lit him up in the nicest ways. She's a great stimulant. And listen, if these people are happy, that's nice, I guess. But at the same time, I just can't help but ask, what is the narrative that we're trying to push here? And why are we trying to push it? This very much seems like a bit of a rewrite of their histories here to make it all seem a lot more lovey-dovey and perfect than it really was. Since she's been with Jeff, she's more peaceful and more calm. She appears more herself, says her sister, Elena Sanchez Blair, sounding like a note I heard often that Sanchez is delighted by her new life, but resolutely the person she's always been, trained on her family, and those she loves. You see her, this beautiful force, all done up in ball gowns, but the truth is, most of the time, we are on the couch in sweats and yoga pants, playing sloppy dice or heads up on our phones, Sanchez Blair tells me. A note I heard often? Nah, dude, she coached her friends. 100%, I promise you, this lady coached her friends on what to say. Bezos seems like the one who has changed, and that's by his own account. She has really helped me put more energy into my relationships, he says. She's always encouraging me. Call your kid it's call your dad call your mom and she's also just a very good role model she keeps in touch with people i've never seen her put makeup on without calling somebody usually her sister listen y'all i i've read this article so many times in the context of like preparing this video and to this day i still don't really understand what this sentence means i've never seen her put makeup on without calling somebody my first thought was that he's saying she usually doesn't wear makeup but then my next question is, why does she need to wear makeup if she's calling somebody? So then my second thought was, oh, he must mean like 
FaceTime calls or like some sort of video call where she can be seen. But then he says she's usually calling her sister. And it's like, why would she need to put on makeup to talk to the girl who's seen her without makeup for like literally her entire life? I literally fell down a rabbit hole with these two sentences. And I was like, I have to let it go. I have to accept that I don't know what this is supposed to convey about her. But please, if you understand what Jeff Bezos is saying here, let me know. <laughs> I don't get it. Here we get another picture of Lauren Sanchez. And you know what? This one's actually fine. I actually think it's a really dope picture. She's like working. She's in the middle of it. She knows her stuff. I wish there was more of this and less of this goofy 90s sci-fi anime America's Next Top Model stuff she has going on over here in the clock. Sanchez clearly adores the more extroverted Bezos. He's the life of the party, she says happily. He's just extremely enthusiastic and extremely funny. He can be really goofy. I mean, you've heard him laugh, right? Okay, what is this notorious Jeff Bezos laugh that we keep referencing? Of course, someone has a compilation of Jeff Bezos laughing because why wouldn't they? Oh. <laughs> I'm scared. Every day I unwittingly encounter something that's going to manifest as a sleep paralysis demon for the night and it's very much going to be this that I hear when I wake up randomly at 3 a.m. I hear this laughed often in fact. Bezos guffaws when I ask if he will get involved with wedding planning. Oh god no. Do I look that dumb? Uh fellas, is it dumb to get involved with planning of your own wedding question mark will she be taking his name she looks at me like i am insane uh yes 100 percent. i am looking forward to being mrs bezos okay it's really funny because this article is again trying so hard to make these people seem lovely but is it just me or do they seem kind of insufferable she looks at me like i'm insane uh yes will you get involved god no do i look that dumb like why do they sound so mean low-key will you take your husband's last name is not a crazy question some people do some people don't some people hyphenate them them. I'm a fan, I think, of just making up a new last name based off of both of your last names. I think that should be normalized and encouraged. Will Smith and Jada Pinkett should have been sink it because that's exactly what she did with that relationship. Anyways, Bezos has begun scooping ice for our margaritas. This is my backup career, he says of his dexterity behind the bar, though he won't be having one himself. I have a couple more meetings. The day before, the FTC sued Amazon for allegedly violating antitrust laws. Behold, the cognitive dissonance of trying to make Jeff Bezos seem like just a cool, awesome human. Bezos is meticulous, slow, frankly, in his bartending, exactly measuring the amount of Milagro tequila and triple sec and slicing the limes into perfect crescent. He wears a black t-shirt, jeans, and cowboy boots, yeehaw, and tiger's eye and silver chain bracelets. I don't think we have salt. I was going to give you a salted rim, he says. It's a very important part of the margarita. Within minutes, an eight ounce deli container of salt is magically supplied by one of the astronaut village team members. Wow, there's like a salt genie out there, Marvel's Bezos. Now, hold on a second. You're out here trying to convince me that you make your own drink so often it's your second job, but you didn't even have salt in your own bar. And also you're like slow, frankly, as the author herself put it, sounding like a skill issue. And not him pretending to be shocked. The CEO of Amazon acting shocked that he was able to get something delivered quickly. This article is actually like slipping into parody for me right now. And I am living personally. Okay, so here we have another photo shoot picture. And I think my favorite thing about this one is that this dirty metal like structure takes up more space than Lauren in this photo. I think that's really, yeah. That's great. In January 2019, Sanchez and Bezos themselves made front page news when their love affair was made public in a National Enquirer in Broglio, prompting Bezos to post a call to arms decrying the tabloid. Since then, both Bezos and Sanchez finalized their divorces and have looked only forward and upward to space. This is a new one. It's not really uncommon for celebrities to find creative ways of downplaying their wrongdoings, but I think I'm looking forward and upward to space is going to be my new one, personally. I'm going to try that next time the IRS comes knocking. Instead of paying my taxes, it's going to be like, yeah, I, I may have committed tax fraud, but 
I've just been really focused on like space and the future. So anyway, it talks a little bit about some of the space launches that Jeff Bezos has done with his Blue Origin company. There were custom baseball caps with a white feather on the front and over the ponytail hole, the phrase, love you to space and back, a favorite saying between Sanchez and Bezos embroidered in her lilting cursive. Yeah, I guess love you to space and back is a bit of an improvement because back when the whole cheating scandal went down in 2019, Jeff actually went viral because one of the messages he sent to Lauren while he was still married was, um, I love you, a live girl. I will show you with my body and my lips and my eyes very soon. The phrase, I love you, a live girl, it has that perfect mix of almost sweet and vaguely terrifying that I think really just really just brings the romantic energy. Anyway, as for the space flights, what does she say to people who think the launches are just adrenaline adventures for the wealthy? Uh, well, I mean, they are, but let's see what she says. Jeff always says building the road to space so that our children can build the future. And that's what it's about. Launch, land, repeat over and over so that we can figure out how to have reusable rockets. She references the Wright Brothers barnstorming flights that allowed paying patrons joy rides in planes so that they could practice their invention. You're really going to compare yourself to the Wright Brothers here? Space travel already exists. Y'all did not invent anything i'm i'm i can't also i really love how she says building the road to space so that our children can build the future when amazon is responsible for like widespread environmental destruction which is honestly probably the biggest threat to our children and the future in existence and frankly if we ever do have to leave the earth it probably would be because of Amazon and similar companies and corporations absolutely ruining the place that we live. But who who has time to get into that in the article when we can just talk about how swole Jeff Bezos is? Like Amazon's climate pollution getting way worse, you know, their emissions increasing drastically as time goes on. None of those things really matter that much when we can just go to space and leave it all behind. Like really, no wonder these people want to leave because they probably know more than any of us just how limited our time is anyway we get a new photo um <laughs> sorry it's not nice to laugh it's just she kind of looks like the gold foil that nasa uses for insulation like the the gold kevlar stuff i think obviously some of that is intentional because she is literally inside of blue origin space flight facility but it's just kind of funny, I don't know. Also, let's be real for a second. I know that she is burning up under all of these clothes they put her in because this, she is in Texas, right? The article actually said it was 102 degree weather. That's like 39 degrees Celsius for all my non-American folks. But she's out here wearing her big puffy jacket and her big puffy space dress. On our aerial tour, she showed me the Bezos family compound, a series of sharp cornered ranch buildings and quartz and steel clustered around a two two-story residence with wide floor-to-ceiling windows built next to a swimming pool made to appear like a pond with rocky banks. This is where everyone gathers for Thanksgiving. The juxtaposition between like this house that sounds like it's straight out of the Hunger Games and you know like warm cute Thanksgiving meetups is really sending me. Sanchez had chaps and western jackets made for everyone for a horseback camping trip and evenings were filled with games of Catan and chess. Chaps? I like to imagine that the chaps were cow patterned and that she had everyone out there looking like Jesse from Toy Story. Anyway this next part is the part in the article where I had to stop and question are they actually trying to make her look bad? Because after all of this, like the Bezos family compound and the hundreds of thousands of acres and the super yacht and her trying to force Jeff Bezos to be a celebrity by posting him on Instagram, Lauren Sanchez says, our lives are pretty normal is how Sanchez puts it. Daily life mostly revolves around our kids. Also, when she says daily life mostly revolves around our kids, what she really means is she has a custody agreement in which she has to fly to Los Angeles every other week, and then they fly back to Seattle, Washington, so she could be at Jeff's house. And then Bezos has kids in college, so sometimes they travel over there as well. And the article said that one of his kids lives in New York. So here, this is the United States. They live over here, right, in Seattle, in the very top left corner of the country. Um, they have to fly every single week to the very bottom, almost, of the West Coast. So back and forth. And then sometimes they also apparently are flying all the way over to New York. But yeah, the very normal life of flying across two 
polar opposite corners of the country and sometimes a third corner as well just to visit all your kids but just wait because the normalcy is just getting started wherever they are there's the same agreement whoever gets up first that person makes the other person coffee she says bezos takes his black or with laird hamilton superfood non-dairy creamer in a self-warming ember mug sanchez uses a mug bezos got her from amazon with the words woke up sexy as hell again splashed across the side of course we got to get that amazon on plug in there uh, like why wouldn't we you know everything they're describing almost sounds normal but it just comes across so weirdly we try not to get on our phones right away sanchez says that's what i'm working on they're also trying to journal in the morning per one of their friends instruction we're not quite there admit sanchez we'll do it like three days a week okay you know what maybe in this context she really is just like me because the struggle to not immediately hop on my phone when i wake up is very real it's like what what if the world ended while i was sleeping how am i gonna know unless i look at my phone but lately i've been counteracting that because five days a week, I will get up um, either at six or seven and I will actually leave <laughs> my residence and I will go touch grass just to try to not turn into whatever the heck is going on in this article. Sanchez likes to drive her daughter to school. The ritual includes Bezos calling out to Ella before they leave. Don't learn anything I wouldn't learn. A line that has become so dependable that the teenager now finishes it for him. Sometimes we tussle, Sanchez says of the school runs. Other times she really opens up and other times she says nothing and I take it in. In the evening after tutoring and piano lessons, the family eats dinner together every night. Is it overly cynical of me to doubt that um, these billionaires are driving their kids to school and eating dinner together every night. I look, I know, like, it's just, I feel lame even suggesting that this may not be true, but come on, brah. Maybe they do. Maybe, you know, they really are just like us. They don't have drivers when they're in uh, Los Angeles, but I just find this hard to believe. I, I, that's, I can't help it. Anyway, they're really still trying to push the they're just like us routine. So it says they work out together. Uh, Sanchez makes sure to let us know that he is a monster in the gym, which is far more information than I needed. They watch TV together. She listens to audiobooks. But this is the part where I was like, no. And both cook too. On the weekends, Bezos makes churros in his deep fryer, a recipe passed down from his Cuban grandfather. Abuelo made churros whenever we were with him, says Bezos. Okay, but who makes the best breakfast? Asks Sanchez. That's like a leading question, says Bezos with a laugh. Oh, not the laugh. Before dutifully answering that Sanchez does. Fried eggs on flour tortillas with New Mexican green chili that Sanchez learned to make from her own grandmother. Y'all are lying. Y'all are lying. <laughs> you are a billionaire. I refuse to believe that you don't have a cook. And I know that this doesn't say that they don't have a cook. It says they're only cooking on weekends, but I just don't believe it. Have you ever watched those architectural digest videos? The ones where like celebrities and actors and other rich people are showing off their houses. You ever notice how when rich people show off their kitchens, they just have to let you know that they, they really do use them guys, but you can see in their eyes that they have not actually set foot in the kitchen in like maybe 12 years. Again, I'm not in the Bezos household, so I can't say what is or is not happening, but I just have my hunches. Saturday family movie nights are a tradition. The week we meet, they just enacted their own version of Barbenheimer with Oppenheimer screened Saturday night and Barbie on Sunday. Of course, Jeff's favorite movie was Oppenheimer and I love Barbie. And there you have us summed up in two movies. Hmm. Okay, so Sanchez is just straight up telling us that Jeff can be summed up by the movie Oppenheimer, which is of course about J. Robert Oppenheimer, more commonly known as the father of the atomic bomb, one of the most deadly inventions in human history. I mean, at least she's making the comparison, so I don't have to. Anyways, like Barbie, Sanchez has no chill, as her teenagers might say. This suits her. She giddily points things out, calling everything magical, and then laughing at herself for doing so. I say magical a lot, don't I? She says with a big smile. I think one of her greatest qualities is that no matter what situation, I can look over and she's wide-eyed and like, can you believe where we are right now, says Toby Gonzalez. She's like a little girl, constant awe and giddiness. Why do all of her friends' descriptions of her sound AI generated? Anyway, this next part almost felt like the writers have to be doing this on purpose, even though I don't think they were. After basically spending multiple paragraphs trying to explain to us how normal actually these people are, they then 
hard cut into one of the most unrelatable stories I've ever heard in my entire life. So as you've noticed, she's been wearing a lot of like designer outfits in this article. They actually bring it up. It says, does she dress for Jeff? I always found it interesting that people say, well, Lauren, you definitely dress more for men. I actually dress for myself, but it works for Jeff. Bezos adds with a wry smile, but does it work for you, Lauren? That is my main question when I look at this photo shoot. Also, hold up before we get into the weird story coming up. It's really funny for her to claim that this is not for Jeff when I'm pretty sure almost every single photo in this photo shoot has been promo for Jeff's Blue Origin company. Like right here, she's inside one of their reusable rockets. She's inside the Blue Origin facility here. She's standing outside the Blue Origin launch pad. Like this entire article could honestly be classified as sponsored content. I'm not even kidding. May not be for Jeff, but it's definitely for Blue Origin. But yeah, I'm not even really blaming her for this photo shoot because obviously she didn't set up the photo shoot. She didn't style herself. This is more so on Vogue. What were you guys doing? Call her effect exuberant luxury. A reminder that not every wealthy woman needs to swaddle herself in the row. Lauren Sanchez, trailblazer for wealthy women by, um wearing flashy designer <laughs> but anyway this is the story the completely unrelatable story that they tell immediately after trying to explain how normal they are because they watch movies and definitely cook for real during new york fashion week sanchez found herself bidding for balenciaga couture against her friend kim kardashian i'm a big auction girl says kardashian and my strategy was to come in last minute we've got a kim k jump scare in this article i didn't think she was going to show up <laughs> Realizing her rival was Sanchez, Kardashian called across the room, we'll share it, meaning they could take turns with one dress. I thought, you wear it once, I'll wear it once, it'll be so cute, says Kardashian. Instead, Caring offered to make two dresses, and both women paid $200,000 and will travel to Paris together for the fitting. Lauren and I are always sending DMs building each other up, Kardashian says. Every time there's a look that we like, she'll say, wow, or OMG, you look amazing. She's such a girl's girl. Fun because I actually think uh, cheating with someone's husband and then leading to their divorce is like the opposite of being a girl's girl. But hey, you know, if Lauren Sanchez ever wants to venture out into music, I hear Ariana Grande is looking for a collab partner. And you know, I know it may seem like I'm being kind of harsh with the whole cheating thing, but um, I'm not. As far as I'm concerned, and this is just my opinion, let me know if you have others, there is virtually no excuse for cheating ever. Because... I'm not even saying you have to pick one person and stay with them forever. However, you can at least respect them enough to leave the relationship first, usually. Now, obviously there's gonna be extenuating circumstances where maybe like safety is a problem or a real concern. I, I'm not talking about those. Someone like Jeff Bezos with all of his resources, he really could have just given a heads up and been like, you know what? I got a dip. Sorry, I'm not saying people shouldn't be allowed to do that, but to be selfish enough to be like, you know what? I'm gonna have a new relationship and stay in this one is just, it's just such a choice. People always try to write cheating off as like, oh, you know, this, like it just happens, you know? There's like the, the heat of the moment. Well, you better turn the AC on. That's all I'm saying. If the heat of the moment is that strong, chill out and make good choices and don't like mess up your partner's life for literally no reason when you literally could have just left first. That's how I feel about cheating. I have like so little sympathy in my heart for it. Anyway, of course, you know, someone who can spend the price of a small house on a dress, we have to make sure that we also know they're giving a lot of the money away too, so they can justify it, right? Her giving has taken on new dimensions since she met Bezos. She's particularly focused on the environmental work of the Bezos Earth Fund, a $10 billion commitment to climate solutions. That's really funny, because uh, you're providing solutions to the problems that you are causing? Question mark? And the Bezos Academy, a network of tuition-free preschools, and the Courage and Civility Award, which donates $100 million to an individual to disperse at their discretion. Honestly, people who have, like, immense wealth, wealth hoarders, like billionaires, for example, they are always trying to show, like, oh, look how generous we are to really balance it out. But it's never really that impressive when you consider how mild this is compared to their actual net worth like if you want to impress me mackenzie scott uh jeff bezos's ex-wife remember i mentioned that 38 billion dollar uh divorce settlement she hasn't just been hoarding that money mackenzie scott reveals details of her 14 billion dollars in donations to 1600 nonprofit mackenzie scott has literally pledged to give away over half of her wealth and she's not just giving more money she's doing it better and says bezos said in 2017 he wanted to include right now donations 
among his mostly long-term philanthropic efforts since the bulk of his donations went to foundations, but Scott gave directly to the charitable organizations. The money hit the street, as this article puts it. And that's not to say, I guess, that Lauren Sanchez is not hitting the street. It says, in August, Sanchez drove to Tijuana with her three kids to chop zucchini in the relief kitchen and hand out backpacks filled with toys and necessities labeled by age and gender. One five-year-old girl took out a toy purse and gave it back to Sanchez to thank her. The story makes Sanchez tear up. I think when you give back, it encourages someone else to give back. It's a really incredible loop. Later, Nico sent her a text. Mom, I just want you to know I'm proud of you. And here's the thing, right? Because I know that this can cause a lot of consternation online, a lot of really divisive discourse when it comes to billionaires giving away money. But I honestly don't think it's very complex at all. I, I, I don't think it's that much of a morally gray scenario. Objectively, donating money to charitable causes is good, but it doesn't really make it any less of a cop-out. More than one thing can be true. Choosing to help people with certain financial contributions doesn't change the fact that you are choosing not to help people by not making larger financial contributions that you easily could without taking any negative sort of impacts. Like, you know Patagonia, the clothing brand? The owner of Patagonia literally gave away the entire company. As of now, Earth is our only shareholder, the company announced. All profits in perpetuity will go to our mission of save our home planet. The owner said, I was in Forbes magazine listed as a billionaire, which really, really pissed me off. And so he did something about it. He just shipped the entire company as a charitable donation. And also this guy already has like a history of doing really great things for the environment and caring about it a lot, but he really put his money where his mouth is. Now, I know you may be asking like, oh, D'Angelo, what do you just expect every billionaire to give away their company to the earth yes i genuinely genuinely do <laughs> you can still be richer than uh, pretty much anyone else on the entire earth without being a billionaire if you are a billionaire you don't need that much money you're hoarding it the fact that you're even allowed to exist as a billionaire is really just a shortcoming of society and should be looked at as such i don't even think it should be a hot take that billionaires shouldn't exist that's my hot take that this should not be surprising at all anyway the article clumsily tries to tackle this whole juxtaposition of like donating 10 billion dollars to the earth fund but also causing all of these emissions sanchez is undaunted by the question of how she reconciles her own carbon footprint with her environment mental work. I think Jeff and I really are focusing on the long-term commitment to climate, and we're extremely optimistic about it. 10 billion is just the beginning. She says that they also use green aviation fuel when possible, and that their yacht can sail using only wind power. We've done it, and it is... <laughs> magical cognitive dissonance at its finest y'all anyway the article goes into a bit more detail about lauren's background how she grew up in albuquerque her parents separated when she was young her father is a pilot and mechanic who owned a flight school you know just normal life stuff and in spite of some struggles with dyslexia that she had uh sanchez went on to journalism school became a journalist got a gig at good morning la chris jenner remembers sanchez as the face of her news when she would have her coffee in the morning she then met sanchez when she and her then husband were peddling their super fit line of stair climbers by the way do you notice how the kardashians keep coming up i literally think that this article and pretty much everything that lauren has been doing is trying to position her as a Kardashian. I'm not here to say that she's untalented or doesn't do things. Like being a pilot, getting your pilot's license, going to school, being a successful journalist, none of that is discounted just because she happened to marry a very rich man. So I want to make that very clear. However, right now, she very much seems to want to become famous for kind of being famous we know they will be in our lives forever says jenner who with her partner corey gamble enjoys date nights with the soon-to-be bezoses such as attending coachella last april and more recently the beyonce renaissance world tour birthday concert with their kids including kim and chloe and northwest and sanchez's teenagers jenner says sanchez knew the words to every song hey i found this picture of them at the concert i like how literally everyone got the memo for clothing except Jeff Bezos. Guys like this are the reason why I try to wear more interesting things nowadays, because I would absolutely just hate to wake up one day and realize 
I never had a drop of fun in my wardrobe for my entire life. In fact, this would have actually been the perfect place to wear that shimmering crop top and the glittery skirt that we talked about earlier. But you know how it is when you're a man, can't be too shiny. Also, low-key Lauren Sanchez seems like the kind of person who would fail the mute challenge at a Beyonce concert, but that's neither here nor there. She'll make sure everyone is up to speed about what's happening in the world, says Jenner, noting Sanchez recently sent an article about the Maui wildfires to their group text. Jenner declined to name its members. Bezos and Sanchez, who also have a home in Maui, <laughs> because of course they do, pledged $100 million to rebuilding efforts. She has more energy than I do, which is really annoying, says Jenner. This is kind of funny because for them, don't Donating $100 million is pretty much the same amount of energy as sending a link to a group text. But anyways, and here we have the final picture of the article. Things are wrapping up. Um, this looks like a stock image, to be honest. And she leaves us with some advice. Does Sanchez have any secrets for aging gracefully? It's really simple. She cites the MEDS acronym. Meditation, exercise, diet, and sleep. Personally adding sunscreen to the end of it. She wears summer Fridays. Yeah, MEDS is definitely part of it, but don't forget the mmm acronym as well, which is money, 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 and more money. Sanchez lifts off the bar stool. Okay, shall we? Let's do it, says Bezos, threading his hand in Sanchez's. But you have to fly us home, she says with a giggle. Bezos leads her towards the helicopter outside. I can do that. Wow. What? An uncanny valley experience. Anyway, it seems like it's somehow not enough for Jeff Bezos to be a billionaire. He also wants to be a celebrity. Any form of hoarding is fair game in this case, whether it's money, land, or even attention, except it's not even really working. None of this has even really translated into that much of an online following for Lauren here. And you know, obviously Lauren Sanchez and her actions are not nearly as destructive as Jeff Bezos and the worldwide destruction. He's just ravaged upon us as the CEO of Amazon. But also I don't care and I didn't ask, plus they're both both cheaters so honestly they deserve each other anyway as always thank you so much for the support thank you for watching if you happen to make it this far and i can't wait to see you in the next one bye